everyone, my name is Kira Lynn and you're watching the new Music Buzz. And on today's show, we have director Mariana Polka and actress Jamie King from the movie Bitch. Then, we're at the Rock Gods Hall of Fame Awards at the Hard Rock here in Hollywood. And in our artist spotlight, we have the veil of Maya. So as you can see, we have a full lineup. So let's start the show. The Rock Gods Hall of Fame Awards took place this past week at the Hard Rock Cafe here in Hollywood, where rock and roll royalty honored their own. The annual award show brings out rock's biggest names to honor their peers. Chanel was in attendance, so let's check it out. Hey everybody, I'm Chanel Hurland and this is Rock and Roll Highway. We are here at the Hard Rock Cafe, right on Hollywood Boulevard for the Rock Gods Hall of Fame Awards. The red carp is just about to start, so let's check it out. Congrats on being honored here tonight. How does that feel? Oh, it's the best. It's what it's, you know, I've been in the industry for 40 years. Yes, I know. And uh, it's finally paying off. We got so many great rocker chicks out there now that are playing guitar and singing and jamming. And it's really come full circle. For sure. Rock music is still so celebrated. So why do you think it's so important to have nights like tonight and, and still hear rock music, especially now? I think rock music is hanging on by a thread. And even Lizzie Hale said to me last night at the Loudwire Awards um, from Hailstorm, she said, uh, Lita, save us. We're, we're losing hard rock and, and uh, heavy metal and it's starting to, to fall off the cliff. And she said, save us. So my next album is going to be down and dirty. Yes, well, we can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've never been honored with anything. I've been this for all my life and grew up with a lot of wonderful musicians. So this is an honor tonight. You worked with Michael Jackson. Yes. How phenomenal was that? Uh, still is amazing. And I did the uh, Victory Tour with them and also Michael's Bad Tour. So, you know, it's, it's every day we still think about them. Is there anything that you can maybe tell us that as fans we wouldn't know behind the scenes of Michael? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, everyone has him as this guy who stepped in a hyperbolic chamber or everything, but the guy was so down to earth. We used to, on the Victory Tour, he took me downtown Atlanta and we went down Skid Row and he was giving money to homeless people to get food and stuff. And that's a side that I wish people knew about, but he was quiet about it. But that's, you know, he was a role model that way. And I miss him, you know, for that reason, so. And I'm excited, it's, it's, and, and so I, I know all the guys in here and the girls that are here, so it's gonna be a nice little family reunion tonight. For sure. You worked with Phil Collins, which I'm yeah, sure is still, a highlight in your career. Still do. Still is? Oh yeah, we're getting ready to head back to England. We have another three weeks uh, to do over in the UK uh, in November. Amazing. So, yeah, I love Phil. Are you kidding? Looking back on your career, do you have a standout moment that really will always be in your mind if you had to think of your, your rock career? It's, I've worked on about 2,600 records, <laughs> so it's really hard to pick anything because I've worked in every genre there is, and each one has its own special moments. But, you know, all, all the early stuff I did with James Taylor, all the stuff I've done with Phil and, and people like Billy Cobham and stuff and Streisand and so, so it's really hard to be selective. I'm just, I'm just happy that I've had a career. <laughs> yeah. It's really amazing because of the people that, uh, that are also being inducted. A lot of them are friends of mine, a lot of them I've worked with and the ones that I haven't worked with I've admired for a very long time. So it's, uh, it's a great honor and I'm blessed to be able to be here tonight. Do you have a standout moment or a crazy story that you can share with us from your career? Um, you know, there have been so many. I mean, playing the US Festival, the choir ride to over 375,000 people, um, you know, it's hard to top that. But for me personally, playing Madison Square Garden, because I'm originally from New York, was, was an incredible thrill. So, like I said, I've been so incredibly lucky so many ways and so many times. Oh. Gary Hoey guitar pick might get you going. Here you go. It's, it's been blessed in my uh, the Hoey water. Look <laughs> the, at me, guys. The pick, the pick of destiny. I love it. Thank you. I'm Chanel. <laughs> Hi, Chanel. It's a I'm pleasure. I'm just taking gifts from you before I even introduce myself. Not a problem. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. How exciting is tonight? We hit the Hard Rock Cafe, Hollywood Boulevard, celebrating rock, honoring everybody. 
how amazing is this? It's amazing for me. You know, I started out rock and rolling in a garage, you know, when I was 16. And uh, it's nice to just do all this hard work and have them, you know, give you some kind of an award like this. I'm, I'm really blown away and I'm very honored to be in the company of everybody. There's been so many crazy moments. I mean, one time, like any you know, rock star, your jeans are too tight. I split my pants on stage, which was really embarrassing. <laughs> going commando. I'm wondering why all the girls <laughs> were laughing at me. Uh, but that was one moment. We had another gig we played one time where we showed up and the guy thought we were like a, a disco band, but we were a rock band. And he pulled his gun out and said, you guys better play some disco. And we did. So that was a crazy moment on the road where we, we had to play by gun, gunfire. Oh, it's real important. I was inducted in 2014. It's for... Um, of course, it's yeah, it's really exciting yeah, because it's for people who've sold a couple of million records that nobody knows yeah. So if you get on the list, it's really nice yeah. Yes. Can you give me one standout moment that will always be in your mind? Well, as you're saying that, I have to think Live Aid pops okay. right up. That was a pretty incredible event. You know, billions of people on watching it at home and several hundred thousand people watching it. That was that was definitely a high point. Yeah. Nights like tonight, why do you think it's so important to recognize rock and recognize people who made an impact in the rock career, rock era? Because, well, I think it's one of the few contributions America has made to the world is, is blues music and rock and roll and rhythm and blues. They're uniquely American inventions. And of course, they've been given back to us by the Beatles and the Stones, and it's recycled back and forth many times now. But it's a uniquely American thing. We don't have that many things that are uniquely American because it's a melting pot. It's stuff is always from some other country. But rock and roll is a unique confluence of European harmony and African rhythms, and it could only have happened in America. So I think it's nice to award that. Hi, this is Elliot Easton of The Cars, and you've just been buzzed. After the break, we talk to director Mariana Polka and actress Jamie King about their new movie, Bitch. We'll be back after these messages. Go to cityloan.com or call 877-553-9071 to borrow $3,000 or more with the equity in your payoff vehicle. Your car is your credit. With City Loan, over 99% of City Loan customers are in good standing every month. So call 877-553-9071 now. And if you sign up for a loan, you're going to receive a free gift card. Don't forget to mention promo code TVAD to receive your gift card. And also, don't forget to follow City Loan and Facebook at City Loan Community and follow us on Twitter at City Loan. Now back to the new music buzz. Hey everybody, I'm Chanel Hood and for the new music buzz, I'm here at the London West Hollywood and just about to speak to Mariana Polka and Jamie King about their new film, Bitch. Let's check it out. Honey, we thought you'd be home. I postponed dinner as long as I could. There's a dog watching me. Mom? Is Jill with you? No, why? She's gone. Mom is being a... Someone tell me what is going on right now. We have to show you. Jill? Why isn't she answering? It's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> is there a medical term for this condition? behaving like a dog. Ladies, congrats. I can see how excited you are about the film. For those who don't know, Bitch can come across as quite a harsh title. So for us who don't know, what can you tell us about the film? It's really subverting that word. You know, the word is used too often in the wrong way. And we're really trying to have everybody use that word um, just to describe a female dog only. <laughs> and then just, yeah. you know, have a synonym for what they're trying to say Otherwise, there's always a better thing to say than insulting someone. So we're 
really excited about what the film is saying in terms of like being kinder as a family member, as a sister, as a parent, as a daughter, whatever it is, like we can always be kinder and better to each other. And in a way, what's really fascinating about Marian, what she's so genius at doing, which is really difficult, is coming up with an incredibly striking title for a film that immediately grabs you and then turning it on its head and making mm -hmm. you question our vocabulary. There's such a yeah. limited vocabulary for what it is that we have in this world. There's, it's very hard to, you know, in a way, sometimes I say, I feel like we're all kind of lying and not intentionally, but it's like when our souls are trying to bring down the truth of our expression, there's a very limited vocabulary to really express how we feel and articulate that. And it's yeah. interesting because, you know, when Jason in the film says, you bitch, right? It's like you see this beautiful arc of, of what that means in, in the world, mm -hmm. how we relate to it. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is that when people say, oh, you're a bitch, so are you the bitch? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's so interesting, like, are you the bitch? And it's like, yeah. wow, okay. Yeah. And she did a film called Good Dick. And then someone else basically took that title and... <laughs> it's interesting with you Good know. Dick too because Good Dick was about sexual abuse and it's about what intimacy really means. So they're really a good double feature. Like if you play them next to each yeah. other, they work really well. And the thing about intimacy that she captures so well, when I think about intimacy, I hear into me see. Mm. Yeah, see into me and like my vulnerability and be yeah. there with me, you know. That's what it's about. It's about connection and... The films are really about being together. And that's why it's so great that we've known each other for so long because when we played Sisters, it wasn't even hard. It wasn't like, how are we going to connect? You know? Like no, we, it was full throttle, full throttle all in. Family. And there's something about that. It's like, mm -hmm. no matter how great of an artist you are, no matter how connected you are, um, the depth of love that we share for one another mm -hmm. is so present. And so, you know, in the film, I so fiercely protect my sister mm -hmm. because Mariana is my sister. Mm -hmm. And in the film, even though you, I have this extreme vitriol and anger towards my brother-in-law, mm -hmm. the fact is, is that Jason and I have worked together, we played lovers, we have been through a lot together. Mm -hmm. And underneath that, you see a loving and a caring and a, a, and a depth. Please, guys, I just need a minute of silence. I don't have any underwear or socks on. Can you figure out a way to uh, pick my kids up? What are the names of your kids' schools? I don't know. Can you Google it? <laughs> Listen, got a little situation. She has no lunch. There's actually a grocery store right down the street. She has no lunch. She has no lunch. Hey, good evening, sir. I'm gonna need to see your wife. She is in the basement. The little door on your right. Bring it, you, Toy. I was in such good hands with Jamie because she's so brave and she's such an incredible woman and such an incredible mom and such a beautiful performer. It was such a joy to do it with you. Oh, thank you. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time. We have got so much information. It's amazing. Uh, where can we see the film? When will it be out? It's coming out here in America November 10th, and everyone can go and watch it, so go watch it, and it's going to be so cool. Can win theaters the theater. and VOD, yeah. it's so cool. At the same time, and in the theater, it sounds really good. The sound design is The sound design is insane. Yeah, Jeff, and our the, sound guy is unbelievable. The music the post -production is, is amazing. In incredible. Yeah, we had such a great time uh, making something that really we used everything to the max, you know, like every possible... Uh, tool that you use to make a film we put a hundred percent of that into it and you can see it when you watch it So that's why it's good to go watch it in a theater. Please watch it. In yeah, a it's a great date Please. movie It's gonna start some conversations. It if is going on a first date it with is. someone go see bitch because it's like actually really romantic It is it's very romantic <laughs> in a very real way P like, and it makes you weep oh, and laugh yeah. and yeah. feel everything so. all the genres, all the emotions. It is the it feelings. is yeah Thank you. I want to keep talking, but we have to wrap it up. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. We love you guys. We love you. Thank you, Pra. Thank you. Maybe Jill's doing you a favor. Maybe it's the life you're supposed to be living. This is the life that I'm supposed to live? This is this is what it was all supposed to be. This is part of the big plan. You Next up, we've got some buzz news. 
Hey guys, Haley Clover here with this week's WTF moment. And I think you could probably guess we're talking about Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez spotted together again. Oh my gosh, and this comes really recently after Selena just broke up with her boyfriend of 10 months the weekend. She really didn't waste much time reconciling things with her ex, Justin Bieber. So is this a good thing? I kind of have to say that I love seeing them back together. I, well, if they are together, they've been having breakfast, they've been riding bikes. They are super flirtatious though. So if it's my guess, I think they are about to be back together. But this whole on again, off again, on again, off again, ah, la, 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 la. it's like pick one guys, okay? Just pick one. I'm thinking maybe now that they went through this breakup, they've had a fairly good amount of time off from each other. Maybe they just needed that time to grow up, realize some things, and you know, hopefully the timing for these two is good now. So I guess we'll see where this relationship goes. There'll be more buzz after these messages. Starting NTR was beginning that path of discovering what is in our everyday lives, what are we eating, what products are we using, what thoughts are we having that are toxic, that are linked to disease, and how can we lower our risk by reducing our exposure to these toxins. We're talking shampoo, conditioner, this, that, this, that, and no one thinks about or, or, or thinks about exactly what's in there. Like, I believe in fairness and I believe in justice. And when I started learning and discovering about the chemicals that were in our everyday products that were linked to causing cancer, I got super pissed. Revolution is a big word, but I think, honestly, that's exactly what it's going to have to be and what it's starting to be with people who are questioning what companies are putting in their products. So whether it is, you know, people who are just using their purchasing power, whether it's working with other advocacy groups to change the laws, there's so many different ways, but ultimately the goal is to not have it be legal to have all these chemicals in our products and in our foods that are causing us disease. Corporations aren't going to change those ingredients unless we demand that they do. That's the unique thing that NTR does is that it, it's taking all this jargon and information that um, sometimes might be hard to understand and is giving it to people in very digestible and very uh, receptive ways. It's going to be a changed world and that's what a revolution is. It changes something that's status quo and we need those things to be changed.
The Veil of Maya recently announced their highly anticipated album, False Idol, that was released last month on Sumerian Records. We caught up with Mark Akubo at the Teargum Ballroom in downtown LA to talk about their new project. What's up, this is Mark from Veil of Maya and you're watching the Buzz Artist Spotlight. Me and our drummer Sam grew up together and we were always into this like crazy death metal music and um, we couldn't really find like many people around us that were into that and it was kind of hard to find shows and we started going to, to hardcore shows around Chicago and um, realized that lots of people were going to that and like it was really active so we kind of like decided we, we wanted to make a band where we could kind of mix you know like our death metal roots with with the hardcore thing that was going on and um, yeah so that this is pretty much like the product of, of that I guess I came to LA to, to write and record that because uh, usually around the winter I get depressed in Chicago just from the weather so I like I like to be in California for the winter as much as possible and then um, I ended up meeting this guy named Max Shad, who will be here tonight, and uh, we just started writing together, and we got along really well, and it just worked out perfectly. So, so yeah, this uh, me and my friend Max Shad, we made we made it happen. Well, we d we definitely added some new colors to our, our palette. Um, but we wanted it to obviously sound like the same band, but like, um, yeah, just more like a more matured, focused version. The thing that made this album different is that um, our vocalist Lucas, this is his second album with us, and we actually wrote this album thinking, like, having him in mind, knowing that he is a very capable singer and like metal vocalist, and um, so we, we purposely like made more more parts for him to sing over as opposed to the last album where it kind of just ended up that way. The initial transition was way more difficult than than this album. This this album since we'd already survived the the big changeover like it was so so much more relaxing and easy. Like before I couldn't even like you know post a picture with me and my mom without someone talking about how like our new music sucks or something and now it's, it's just like everyone's super supportive that that stuck with us through it so it's really awesome um we're gonna go home and like you know learn how to perform all the songs on our new album I guess and then um I think we have a tour in India booked for January and like I mean we find out our first week numbers on Monday I believe so like probably start putting together tours as soon as we get those those political uh, endeavors out of the way. <laughs> Is there any more music videos coming off the new album? There might be one more secret one. I, I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so far we've played two new songs live, but like tonight we're only going to be playing one. Oh, you can you can get us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Um, should be Veil of Maya band or official or whatever, and then we all have individual profiles as well. So hit us up on there. Hi, my name is Mark from Veil of Maya, and you've just been buzzed. When I talk about the movie Detroit, this represents a new destiny in this city. We're all tied together in a single garment of mutual destiny. My future is linked with his and yours and yours. This is Coke times 20. <laughs> Take a position to handle my business. What we need is this new breed of architect, the best. Design at the community center down at the Brewster Projects. What were you doing down in that neighborhood? I'm from there. 
What's young and white, 90%? Man? New heroin use. But the demand is here and the supply is coming. The person that we are naming as lead architect, the vision behind the new Brewster Homes, Mr. Rashid Smith. He just started a war, man. I ain't had no choice. What we're doing here is good for everyone. The city feels like my ideas are getting lost, man. You can't just decide when you want to step back into my life. Don't even tell me, Maya. Huh? Ah! Take your Come hands off me. Take your hands off me. You want it, huh? These was people's houses, man. That ain't nothing. This is what's gonna happen. I'm out. It's only a matter of time. Somebody's gonna break. Those people out there, they've already signed the agreements. I'm not putting my people out. Go on back out there and do your goddamn job or I'll bury you, boy. I see! I see! No, 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 no! You could have been any. That's all we have. Special thanks to Chanel Herlin, Mariana Polka, Jamie King, Marco Kubo, and the Hard Rock Cafe. It's daylight savings time, so don't forget to turn your clocks back. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, tweet us at Twitter, and double tap us on Instagram, all at the New Music Buzz. My name is Kira Lynn. Peace out, guys. Buzz is brought to you by Monster Products, pure monster quality with monster sound, rock and roller suitcase turntables, vinyl's new best friend, and City Loan. Get cash for your car today. For more music entertainment news, go to www.thenewmusicbuzz.com.